An interesting thing that we face every year, it seems like the, uh, the biggest pressure we have as writers is to have a very successful musical because it's like, that was great, it really sold well and a lot of hearts were touched, now do another one. <laughs> so to tell that same story year after year, uh, it is important for us to find just that germ of an idea and it seems like either the title of the musical or as we're talking about it, there's just something, there's a spark, there's an anointing that, that just catches and we go from there. And particularly in Easter, because we have that, the season, you know, you have the, the trial and the darkness of, of uh, Golgotha and then the cross getting to that victorious morning when he rose from the dead. It's easy for a musical to bog down. It's easy for, for things to be, you know, because you need kind of somber moments for several sections there. So we are always looking for a way to tell the story in a new and different way that is consistent with, with the history. Uh, we want to be consistent with that, but to find a fresh way to say the same Easter story. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the narration. So um, this time, instead of just telling the story itself, uh, the approach we took was to just take this theme, Champion of Love, and uh, to kind of shine a spotlight on it from several different directions. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? What is a champion? And why did we need one? And who is he? And what did he do for us? And so each song sort of does that. I think if a church really wanted to tell the story, maybe have some drama to go with it, they easily could because mm -hmm. we have the song No More Waiting, which right. is like a triumphal entry mm -hmm, song. And we go down to uh, these tender moments that could be at the cross and then the triumphant moment of resurrection. But really the narration itself kind of takes this approach of helping us to just focus in on who the champion is and what he did. I think there are some great opportunities here. If churches have a traditional passion play that they have put on for years mm -hmm. and years, as many have, there are some moments in here that could easily be extracted from the musical and put into the storyline of right. the Passion Week. And to end with a song like Crown Him With Many <laughs> Crowns, I mean, how do you top that? It doesn't that? get better. <laughs> so, and I think for people who are familiar with the song Champion of Love, which of course many people are, um, they're going to see that and they're going to go, oh, wow, I love that song. <laughs> for people who've never heard that song, it's going to blow them away. It is, yeah. It's a wonderful song. And I think if people will just look at the back cover and they'll see, you know, because many of our friends will write nine brand new songs and then put in a resurrection medley of, of hymns, but they're just going to say, oh, I love that song. Mm -hmm. I love that song. Mm -hmm. And we've sprinkled in some new songs and some new moments as we needed to tell the story, but it's just filled with classic songs that are either hymns or have been written in the last 20 years and, and recently even, mm -hmm. but just song after song that I believe they're going to really love. Yeah, and I have to say that your arrangements this time around, as I listen to the songs to write narration, I, I just got so excited all over well, again because you. they're so I beautiful. Appreciate that. So, wish I was singing in a choir that was going to do it. <laughs> I may have to go join one. We can find one for you. <laughs>